You're aware of how ridiculous and complicated tail sitter VTOLs are, right? In today's video, we will show you something even more ridiculous and complex. Introducing the abandoned Grumman G674 Nutcracker. A folding fuselage VTOL designed for anti-submarine and recon missions can be deployed by cruisers, destroyers, frigates, or any ship capable of carrying helicopters at the time. Why is this so important, you might ask? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome to our channel, Future Warplanes where we tell you about military fighter jets, military drones, and military planes from the currently famous in the air to the most advanced around the world. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future. And let's dive in! To enhance its global simultaneous deployment capabilities, the U.S. Navy proposed a 10,000-ton light aircraft carrier program. Obviously, a small-decked mini-aircraft carrier cannot transport large-scale interdiction and landing carrier aircraft. Harriers can be used directly by combat aircraft. The support-based carrier aircraft operating on a small platform, on the other hand, has yet to arrive. As a result, the development of a competitive scheme for vertical short takeoff and landing support aircraft, codenamed Type A, was initiated. The Navy's main requirement is a 1. CH-46-like transportation and delivery capabilities, 2. the same anti-submarine capability as the S-3A, as well as 3. the same early warning plane as the E-2C. At the same time, it can provide electronic support and air refueling. Obviously, it must be VSTOL. So what is VSTOL? A vertical and or short takeoff and landing aircraft is one that can take off and land vertically or on short runways. Vertical takeoff and landing aircraft are a subset of VSTOL aircraft that do not require runways at all. In general, a VSTOL aircraft must be able to hover. Helicopters are not classified as VSTOL because the classification is only used for aeroplanes, which achieve lift or force in forward flight by planing the air, resulting in speed and fuel efficiency that is typically greater than that of helicopters. From the 1950s to the 70s, most VSTOL aircraft were experiments or outright failures. The F-35B Lightning II, Harrier, Yak-38 Forger, and V-22 Osprey are examples of VSTOL aircraft that have been mass-produced. A rolling takeoff, sometimes combined with a ramp, reduces the amount of thrust required to lift an aircraft from the ground when compared to a vertical takeoff, increasing payload and range for a given thrust. The Harrier, for example, is incapable of taking off vertically with full weapons and a fuel load. As a result, if a runway is available, VSTOL aircraft will generally use it. VTOL operation is preferred over short takeoff and vertical landing or conventional takeoff and landing operation. VSTOL was developed to allow fast jets to be operated from forest clearings, very short runways, and small aircraft carriers that could previously only carry helicopters. The main advantage of VSTOL aircraft is that they can be based closer to the enemy, reducing response time and tanker support requirements. In the case of the Falkland War, it also allowed for high-performance fighter air cover and ground attack without the need for a large aircraft carrier with an aircraft catapult. In the 1970s, according to Grumman, we just need a solution. So if we can make an aircraft land and take off from a very small flat surface, any ship could be converted into an aircraft carrier. And wouldn't that be awesome? and Grumman began working on a new project. The design would be based on the OV-1 Mohawk, this strange-looking thing. The Nutcracker G674 was developed with the ability for the rear section of the fuselage to rotate 90 degrees downwards, along with the engines, allowing for vertical takeoff and landing to and from a launch pad placed at the aft section of a destroyer, frigate, cruiser, or simply any ship large enough to carry a helicopter at the time. To provide extra stability when landing, the launch pad would have a docking arm or crane that would connect with a probe on the aircraft before the final touchdown, much like a hummingbird feeder on a nectar of a flower. Why didn't they call this thing Hummingbird from the start? There appeared to be landing gear somewhere hidden away, but the designs we have today make it unclear how that would have ended up working. Imagine all of this in even slightly rough seas. What a nightmare! Grumman filed for a patent on this new aircraft, which was classified as G674, naming Marshall J. Corbett and Robert W. Cress as the inventors. Numerous scale models were built and tested. It looks stupid, but it did work. Later, a development was created based from this, introducing the Grumman 698. The Grumman 698 was a VTOL aircraft concept 
developed in the mid-1980s. Several versions, including a canard design, were produced, but all shared the same basic propulsion system. One or two turbofans mounted on either side of the fuselage and capable of tilting through more than 90 degrees would be used. The craft was able to take off vertically and fly horizontally at high speeds as a result of this. Aerodynamic control surfaces were installed in the jet exhaust to provide low-speed roll, pitch, and yaw control. In the NASA Ames 40X 80-foot wind tunnel, a full-scale powered model was tested and a lot of art was created. Two different versions of the same work of art. These were scanned from photos of the original paintings. One is clearly cruder than the other and is most likely a preliminary sketch before the final piece. The Grumman 698 as a rescue plane capturing a pilot mid-parachute descent. It's unclear how the rescue plane just happened to be in the right place at the right time. The Grumman Design 698 aeroplane is a twin turbofan-powered vertical short takeoff and landing aircraft that the military could use as a high-altitude vertical takeoff and landing radar platform. It even has ability for civil applications that necessitate fast short takeoff and vertical landing operations. The Design 698 411 is propelled by two standard General Electric TF-34 GE-100 high-bypass ratio turbofans, which enable both vertical flight and efficient high subsonic cruise at altitude. The cross-shafted version employs two CTF-34 engines, modified versions of the standard T-34 GE-100 engines. The engines are tilted on an integral structure to achieve vertical flight. The forces and moments produced by the control vanes located in the fan exhaust flow are used to control the attitude in the three axes. The cross-shafted version employs variable inlet guide vanes, which modulate thrust by transferring shaft horsepower from one engine to the other, allowing for alternative roll attitude control. The mathematical model was based on NASA Ames Research Center wind tunnel tests, as well as other Grumman tests. The U.S. military is interested in several aspects of this plane. The attitude control vanes in the fan exhaust flow solve one of the major issues with fixed-wing jet lift VSTOL aircraft, attitude control at speeds below the velocity for minimum control velocity. When the aircraft is flying at less than 120 knots, the primary stabilization and control effectors are the control vanes. The control vanes can generate thrust perpendicular to the engine's axis with a magnitude of as much as 30% of the total thrust. This force is generated beneath the aircraft's center of mass so that the pitch and roll attitude is controlled by a moment generated by a single unopposed force. The vertical vane controls yaw and the horizontal vane controls pitch and roll when the nacelles are close to 5 inches. The vertical vane regulates roll while the horizontal vanes control pitch and yaw when the nacelles are close to 90 degrees. Coordination of these controls in relation to nacelle angle is one of the control system's tasks. The proper angular control is provided by the geometric positioning of the vanes in relation to the center of gravity. The acceleration given by the angular motion is offset by the force generated by the vane, which acts in the opposite direction. Adverse non-minimum phase acceleration response is the term for this phenomenon. The pilot's input first produces a negative acceleration since the force is acting in the opposite direction from the desired direction of flight. This distinctive characteristic is similar to the effect the elevator creates on a close-coupled conventional airplane and it may cause a pilot-induced oscillation. The benefit of these vanes is that the force is generated without the need to circulate high-pressure air about the aircraft or bleed the engines. Additionally, the thrust loss is minimal, less than 1% of the installed total thrust or 6% of the axial thrust. Almost any traditional high-bypass ratio turbofan that can be tilted and operated vertically can be employed with this force attitude control method. And that's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comments space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next video.